Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial with Cheyenne Spirit Creations. So in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching how I make my beaded rope necklaces. So for this project you're going to need beads. Um, the type of beads that I'm using are um, both size 11 tohos and seed beads. Um, I use this rope it's like a paracord rope i'm not entirely sure what the size is you can use different sizes um, but yeah if you buy this from michael's um, i believe they have that in the states as well but in canada i buy this from uh, michael's craft store you can also buy it from walmart um, it's just paracord so i think it's just like a regular size yeah and then i'm using size B bonded Nymo thread. Um, I'm not sure where the thread is available at this moment. I know it's hard to get right now. Luckily, I was able to get a lot of it. So I start off with a big piece of thread. So it's bonded Nymo thread. And then I'm using a size 10 long beading needle. It's nice to use a longer beading needle for this because um, you're going to be picking up a lot of beads. So I've threaded my needle and I'm going to add a little knot on the end of it. Okay, so I'm going to cut off the excess thread. And my needle is threaded. So to start off with doing the rope necklace, you're going to go through your rope. So you put your needle right through the middle of the rope and the knot at the end of it will secure it, but it's a little bit, you know, you could, if you're pulling really hard, pull it through. So to make it even more secure, wrap it around a few times and then pass your needle through again. And that is how you can start off with your rope necklace. So for this size um, rope and for the size beads that I'm using, it takes about eight beads to make one circle around. So I'll show you one circle around. So I've got five, six, seven, eight beads. Let's see how that looks. And it's sometimes it's different for different size beads. So we'll see how that looks to make one little loop around. You can create your first loop. So I always go around one more time. I circle my thread around one more time and then I pass my needle through where the bead is and you it passes through about two beads over. So you've gone right through the paracord when you're doing this. And then the next step, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back. So this is where it ended. And then I looped around one more time. I passed my needle through the paracord about two beads over. And then I'm gonna take my needle and come back around through the beads coming back in the direction that I'm going to be threading the beads. So it's going to be wrapping around this way. So this is the wrapped technique. So now that I've added my first little circle, I can add a lot more beads on at once. Um, I recommend if you're just starting out, start out with fewer beads. So maybe do like 40 to 100 um, per wrap. So I've added eight. I added 16 more. I'm going to add some copper. another 16 
So now I've threaded on some more beads for the pattern that I'm going to use. And then you use one hand to hold the rope into place. With the other hand, you're wrapping the beads around the rope. And then when you come around again, you swing your thread around one extra time. And then you're going to pass your needle through the rope a couple beads over. Pull your thread. And then you take your needle and you go back. You take your needle and you go back through those two beads that you left off at. So I'll do I've grabbed some beads. Again, I'm going to be wrapping it around using one hand to secure the rope and laying my beads nicely. And then I wrap the thread around one extra time to hold it tightly into place. I'm taking my needle and I'm putting it through the paracord over a couple of beads. I pull my thread through and then I bring my needle back through those last two beads so that I'm coming out in the same direction. So I can continue wrapping around. So we'll add some more of this copper And then again, I'm wrapping around. And you want to make sure that the, the thread isn't too tight, that they're not too tight together so that it doesn't create, it lays nicely. And then you're going to bring your thread and around a second time to secure it tightly into place, passing your needle through the rope and then you come back through those two beads the last two beads so that you can continue with the flow of your wrapped rope I'm going to add a little bit more black I think I just needed to add eight. Um, and I'll just add a little bit more. So now I'm going to start adding my colors.
and I recommend watching the video in its entirety if you, it's going to be your first time doing a rope because seeing the process uh, really helps ingrain it into your mind. So again, I've threaded on some of my beads here. I'm going to be doing blocks of the fire colors, wrapping it around my rope and then tightly holding it into place and wrapping it around one extra time after I've laid my beads down. I'm going to take my needle and I pass it directly through the rope right at the end here where my beads ended. Pass it through the rope. So you're coming out the other side. Then you take your needle and you bring it back through those last couple beads so that you're coming out in the direction you need to continue with. So I've added on my next color block and again holding it, wrapping it and then again. So you don't want to push your beads too tightly together because then they can start looking all bunched like that. Keeping them a little bit looser but not too loose. For the wrap around and you'll you'll learn the tension that you need as you do it the only way to really learn to do something is to actually practice it so you'll get better and better as you go so again i wrapped it around one more time with my thread i'm pushing my needle through the rope and then i bring my needle back through those last two beads so that I come out in the direction that I need to continue on with the rope. So I know that it takes eight beads to wrap around once. So depending on how far I want a color to go, I just do it in increments of eight. So for these little blocks of color, I'm doing 32. And in between the 32, I'm doing eight um, copper beads. So again, just wrapping around and And then I wrap around an extra time and push my needle through the rope. So right where that last bead ended, I'm pushing my needle through the rope. And then the needle's coming out the other side. You pull it through and then you bring your needle back through those two beads, the last two beads that you laid so that you're coming out in the same direction. So you can just continue on wrapping from there.
Okay. And wrap it around. And make sure that you're holding the tension during your wrap. Sometimes it can get awkward with where your thread is, but you don't want anything to get tangled. So I wrapped it around one more time after I came to where my beads stop. I'm putting my needle through where the last bead is, but I'm putting it through the paracord. I'm coming out the other side, pulling my thread through, and then I come through those last two beads to continue on. So I'm just going to fast forward um, so you can see how we end off the necklace. So now I'm at the point where I am ready to add on. I finished the, the rope necklace and it turned out beautifully. So if you have a look at this, I added these tiny little flowers into the beadwork. So when you're starting out, if this is your first time doing a rope necklace, I just recommend doing something a little bit simpler. But um, after you've done a couple and you build up your confidence with making beaded rope necklaces, um, I also have a tutorial that I'll be uploading um, for how to do these little tiny flowers in your rope necklaces. So they're super pretty and um, yeah, it just makes your rope necklaces um, that much better being able to do different things with it so what I've done is I cut up two pieces of leather so I cut them both in the same length um, they're not really the same thickness but I am going to trim down the thickness um, after I get it attached to the rope so how you attach um, your rope necklace to these the idea and the reason why I've cut it into these two pieces is because I'm going to create two leather little leather loops. This is how I do my necklaces. So each side will have a loop like that and then I'm going to add on some findings um, to attach it to make like a chain that will attach both sides to each other. So it'll be a necklace. Yeah so I've cut up my tiny pieces of leather. You can use you know whatever materials you have. I suggest using leather because it's stronger. Um, but you could also use, I mean, the pleather if that's all that you have, but definitely recommend using the leather. So when you burn this paracord um, and you just melt it down and then you put it directly into the leather and then close it up, you can use the bottom of your lighter to kind of add some more pressure because it will be hot. Um, it fuses. So when it when it dries off and cools down, it'll fuse together and it's much better and more um, secure than if you were to use super glue or any other type of glue. So this is how I attach it. So you have to burn and I'm not sure if YouTube, if you're allowed to show burning on camera. So I'm just going to leave that part out. But what I'm doing is I'm just burning the end of the paracord. And so now that it's burnt, it's all melted on one side. So you just put it in there right away and then you squish it down. So the burnt, um, the melted bit will dry and cool off and it's gonna cool off and it's gonna be fused together. And so it's fused together really, really well when it's all finished. Yeah, so I just don't wanna do anything wrong with YouTube and I don't wanna, cause I know people get in trouble with that for t with TikTok and I don't wanna get in trouble with YouTube. I'm not sure what the rules are about using your lighter or fire. So yeah, there we have it. So this should be fused together really nicely. It probably needs to cool down just a bit. So as I said earlier, I'm trimming it down now that it's attached. So I didn't want to do it too, too thin and then not have enough. Um, yeah, I just trim the sides off after it's attached. There we go. 
So I'm gonna be sewing that together on the side. But before I do that, I'm just going to attach the second side of my beadwork. So again, I'm gonna do the lighter part off camera. I'm just burning the tip um, so I can melt it. And then once it's all melted, I mean, you blow the flame away, obviously, and then you put it right onto the leather. So it's all melted there, and then you would close it up and then use your lighter to fuse it nicely together. So I just hold it down for a little while and, and then I'm going to sew together the sides. I'm going to trim this side a little bit and then sew it together. It's really hot. That's why I don't use my fingers. I've done that a couple of times and then my fingers hurt because it kind of burns. Yeah, so definitely be careful when using your lighter. Um, just trimming down the leather. Okay, I think that should be a little bit thinner on the side and then it should be good. So the next step, the next step that we're going to do is just tying the sides. Um, I recommend using sinew if you have it on hand. I don't have any at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to be using the size, the, the bonded Nymo thread. So the same thread that I used to make the necklace. So for this part, because I'm going through the leather, I don't have a leather needle or anything, but what is stronger is using the size 10 short beading needles. I find it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, you might need your pliers to pull through if you're using leather or an owl to pre-poke a hole if needed. I don't know what kind of leather you might have on hand. I'm using a thinner leather that's easier to work with, but again, still I need to use the pliers sometimes to pull my needle through. So I created my little knot on one end and I'm going to start on the bottom and I'm just sewing up the sides here. So yeah, it's a little bit hard to pass through. I just use pliers to push and pull the needle through. And I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna be sewing my way up. I think I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit here so you can see more. I'm using some flat nose pliers to pull my needle through. And then I don't sew it all the way, obviously, because I'm going to be adding um, some findings in there. And then I just go back down through the same hole, but on the opposite side. Oops. I mean, in the opposite direction, not on the opposite side. I'm putting my needle through on the same side. And there you have it. So you've sewed down one side and then you sew down the other side. 
I cut my thread and then I just burn it and then yeah so you do that for all four sides and then the next part will be putting on the findings so now I've sewn on both sides so as I said it's very secure with the um, the fusing when you're lighting it and then you're also sewing the sides and you can sew through the rope at the same time so there we have the beaded necklace and you can attach any kind of findings that you like for me i'm going to be using let's see what i have here kind of unorganized but add maybe five of these let's grab six just in case i want to make it a little bit longer So these are like split rings. They're the bigger size. So I open one. I'm gonna put another one on at the same time while it's open. And then I slide it through my leather. And I close it up. So it's attached like that. Oh, just trying to put it in a nice position. So there's one and two. I'm gonna open up another one. And then I'm going to attach it to this one. Grab onto another one. close it up so I've got four on there but I grabbed six five should be good though I'm gonna open up one more for the other side and pass it through my little leather on the other side and one on both sides This is kind of awkward. I think I might need to trim it down a little bit. It, it should. Let's see. Trim it down a tiny bit more. And that will work perfectly. And then I close that one up. And there's so many different ways that you can finish off your necklace. This is just what I have available right now. Um, sometimes I use little findings that I just glue, glue it into. Um, but yeah, so that is how you create a beaded rope necklace. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, please like and subscribe. I have so much more content to share with all of you. Um, and definitely check out the tutorial for how to create the little flowers. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.